Hello and welcome everyone to our latest presentation on blood purification in COVID-19. As we all know, the infection in the COVID-19 starts in the nasal cavity and then goes in to affect the lungs and the alveoli. It is primarily mediated by the ACE2 receptors whereby it increases the cytokine production and causes a cytokine storm. Now the COVID-19 has a typical signature which is associated with reduction in the T cell levels and elevation in the antibodies and the cytokines. Now the phases of infection is there is an initial infection of the local tissues with initiation of a local innate immune response, finally a systemic impact. Now it is this systemic impact which is associated with the respiratory symptoms that is the cytokine storm and the production of ARDS and ultimately may lead to a fatal outcome. Now what we are trying basically in this is to try to clear these cytokines from the blood thereby reducing the systemic impact of the disease and preventing the fatal outcome in patients who develop a cytokine storm. Now the blood purification therapy can attenuate the organ damage and the immune paralysis. It can do it by two ways which are proposed mechanism by which the blood purification may work. That is by reducing the peak concentration of the cytokines thereby reducing their effects. The other is the cytokinetic model. In the cytokinetic model the basic idea is by blood purification systems we are reducing the level of cytokine in the blood thereby causing a gradient from the tissue into the blood and thereby removing the cytokines from the local tissue and also enhancing the entry of the cells into the local tissue thereby resulting in removal of the infection needles. Now the approaches that are present for reducing this cytokine are direct hemoperfusion and the second is plasma absorption, third is CRRT with hollow fiber filters with absorptive properties and the last is high dose CRRT with medium cutoff or high cutoff membranes. Now apart from these, the other extracorporeal therapies that can be incorporated in reducing the impact is the use of ECOR, ECMO, renal replacement therapies. Apart from that, we can also have Mars for liver support. So coming first to cytosorb, this is basically absorber beads which absorb the cytokines into them. So these cartridges contain biocompatible polystyrene, divinyl, benzene, copolymer beads. And so once the blood is flowing through them, they absorb the cytokines and reduce their levels in the blood. Now it is recommended to use it for three days. And you have to change the filter every 24 hours. Uh, the minimum flow is 100 and the maximum is 700. But the optimal that is recommended is 150 to 500. The contraindications include low platelets, any other contraindication to extracorporeal therapy, allergies, heparin induced thrombocytopenia, sickle cell crisis, morbidly obese patients, patients who already have a life expectancy less than one month, pregnancy, and someone in a clinically futile state. So let's analyze the data that is present till now of use of these devices in COVID-19. This is a case series which was published of 50 patients. In this, the mortality rate is around 30%. And if you see the SOFA score and the Apache are quite high. So this was a very sick group of patients with severe to moderate ARDS. And uh, as you can see, the urine output and the NORAD requirement is quite high. Apart from that, the levels of cytokines is also very high. So if we divide this patients in terms of survivor versus non-survivor, if you look closely, then all the parameters that are related with cytokine are showing a reduction in survivors. While in the non-survivors, most of these parameters are elevated in spite of therapy. So this could be one of the reasons why they did not develop. And if you look in terms of clinical 
outcomes the sofa score the pf score all have improved post the use of these devices while in the non survivors it was not found to be reduced now this is one of the large studies which is ongoing right now which is being done in critically ill patients undergoing the covid-19 for cytokine storm and uh, the results may add more to the available data till now apart from that we have a lot of pilot studies and case series like this blood purification therapy with hemodia filtration with enhanced absorptive properties and in this they find that after the use of the absorptive crrt there was a reduction in the il6 levels and sofa scores as well so overall showing benefit of use of these therapies now hemoperfusion in covid-19 pneumonia again with cytokine storm a case series in this they find that most of the patients had a reduction in after treatment parameters in terms of both the clinical outcomes as well as the lab outcomes this is a old study and a post hoc analysis it shows that in patients who are having septic shock there is a benefit of using this polymyxin b hemoperfusion therapy so though the overall study was negative in the specific subgroup of endotoxemic septic shock they did find some benefit of using the therapy so this is again a registry study in this they analyzed 12 patients with a mean age of 59 and this organ affected and the apache scoring were quite significant here they found reduction in the sofa scores improvement in map decrease in lactate and decrease in the lung injury scores overall all the parameters showing again uh, improvement in outcome then there was this study which was a randomized trial published in lancet they include 34 patients but in this they found significantly worse outcomes with cytokine absorption compared to patients who did not receive any therapy so they have concluded that early initiation of cytokine absorption with severe covid 19 and bb ecmo did not reduce the il6 levels and had a negative impact on survival now as you can see there is a lot of organ cross talk especially between the lungs and the kidney and this usually results in a multi organ dysfunction if it is not treated in an appropriate manner so that is a role of reducing the co2 levels and thereby improving the renal outcome so this is one of such trials so in this they found that using the extracorporeal carbon dioxide removal there was an improvement in the kidney parameters as well however this is a meta analysis which ha has been done of all the patients of covid 19 and these therapies till now and in this there is a lot of variation with both positive as well as negative results so we are not yet sure about the utility of these devices so the study population is very very small as of now now we need to find out which patients are more likely to benefit from this disease as we know that covid-19 per se is not very similar to any of the known cytokine storms that we know till now that is the ARDS or sepsis or the cart induced CRS however we must also need to know that this is just the initial part of covid-19 covid-19 can over the course progress from this stage into a this like a severe ARDS where you have all these parameters also elevated so we need to understand at which point and in which patient we need to intervene with these therapies to have a better outcome so to summarize regarding covid-19 there are three major problems the first is the release of cytokine which can be because of mostly that is cytokine release syndrome but it can also be augmented by the use of mechanical ventilation use of ecmo crrt circuits and the hemophagocytic syndrome in terms of organ cross talk there can be a organ cross talk with heart resulting in cardiorenal syndrome the as we have already discussed the organ cross talk between lungs and kidney the high peak pressures as we have seen as well as rhabdomyolysis in terms of systemic there is a impact of the positive fluid balance that may there in the patient the endothelial damage and third space loss hypotension use of nephrotoxic agents metabolic acidosis and hyperkalemia 
so to deal with the cytokine part we can use the cytokine removal therapies to reduce the effect apart from that for crosstalk we have therapies like elvad for the lung part we can use the ecor or ecmo for abdomyolysis we have to use the crrt and here for fluid management and the electrolyte and the acidosis management we can use crrt as a method of reducing the impact so the take home message for use of these devices is whenever you are using these devices it is recommended to use a jugular double lumen catheter for adequate size flow do not put it anywhere else because the flows are not adequate and we want a very good flow in these patients and so putting it in a jugular catheter is the best especially the right jugular in case of unfractionated heparin start with 10 international units per kg per hour but in some patients you have to go with, with higher doses up to 15 to 20 to ensure the patency of the circuit blood flows above 150 and the use of diffusive therapy with minimal filtration fraction helps in avoiding circuit clottings so do not attempt flows less than 150 and it is better to use the diffusive therapies finally cytokine removal strategy should be reserved in patients with high circulating levels of cytokines high sofa score with a clinical association with high vasopressor requirements and immune dysregulation however the cutoffs and the clinical parameters which could be used are not yet well established these are especially the areas of further research and even which blood purification therapy we can use to reduce the impact of covid-19 is still to be determined because there is a lot of organs which are affected and a lot of organ can be supported by extracorporeal therapies so thank you for your patience and check our website for further information